Today, we've some exclusive behind-the-scene updates to share from the recent press conference of the much-awaited fight between heavyweight demon Anthony Joshua and former MMA fighter Francis Ngannou. Stay with us as we take you behind the scenes and discuss what happened backstage. As reported by Yahoo, their reporter Alex Paddle was backstage, and when he entered the press area, the first thing he noticed was that the room was pretty dimly lit, giving away a very intimidating and labyrinth-like vibe. That's a Friday as well. So again, mark your calendars, that's a Friday. And look, on that very quickly, I've always thought that MMA, boxing, whatever it is, should be every day. Like every other sport. I, I hate that, the fact that it's just a Saturday. I grew up on ESPN Friday Fight Nights. Fighting should be every single day of the week. So I think it's a good thing that it's on a Friday. After being led down a series of tight, dark hallways, his team was navigated through various interview rooms. The whole setting felt very mysterious and clandestine, almost like you're wandering on the set of a spy movie. His first interview was with the legendary boxing promoter Frank Warren. And with FreeBets.com, Forged Irish Stout and Empire Fight Store, delighted to be joined here today. Frank Warren, we're back in London for another huge press conference for a fight that takes place in Riyadh. Um, we can just see with the graphics behind us, knockout chaos, they're going. Uh, it's just an exciting time to be involved in heavyweight boxing. It's an exciting time to be involved in boxing. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. Who is one of the most influential personalities in the world of boxing. He is one of the main guys behind organizing such mega events in the Middle East. No wonder he always seems busy. Despite being over 771 years of age, Warren has an amazing work ethic, has promoted some of the biggest names in the sport, and is currently the leading force behind the high-profile boxing events happening in Saudi Arabia. He seemed very relaxed and happy, saying we're in a golden generation of boxing right now. He is right, though. There are some very exciting matchups coming up, and with the speculation you're watching on our channel on a daily basis, one thing's for sure, boxing fans are in for a hell of a ride. So after speaking with Warren, Alex was directed through another winding hallway to an interview with the MMA behemoth who wants to make a name for himself in the world of boxing, Francis Ngannou. Despite losing to Tyson Fury in his debut boxing match, Ngannou made headlines thanks to his amazing determination and courage. Despite being an ex-MMA fighter with little boxing experience, Nyanu was able to give Fury a tough fight. In fact, he dominated Fury on multiple occasions throughout the match. Better off fight now, the orthodox stance. Ugani, because he will get caught with that right hand. That is the shot for a southpaw. Thanks to this amazing performance, Inganu's popularity has quadrupled, and the excitement for his next fight against Anthony Joshua has intensified, which is why Alex was interviewing him. Let me tell you, Nganu cuts an incredibly imposing figure in person. He stood well over six feet tall, his massive frame illuminated by the bulbs surrounding his dressing room mirror. He was decked out in an ornate dashiki lined with shimmering gold threads, along with other flashy gold jewelry. Just the sight of him got my adrenaline pumping. When he went to shake Nyanu's hand, his enormous mitt completely swallowed up Alex's hand. Imagine how painful a punch from these massive hands might feel. Alex thought that Nyanu was going to crush his hands that day with a simple handshake. Thankfully, he didn't do such a thing, but Alex did let out an involuntary sigh of relief when he got my hand back intact. This guy has legendary punching power that could easily detach my arm from its socket. Meeting him face to face, I understand why he's earned the nickname, The Predator. After that nerve-wracking handshake, I was led back out into the gloomy corridors. I ran into Matchroom Boxing CEO Frank Smith, who was nearly unrecognizable because he'd shaved his head bald. People would be saying to you, looking at you, and you look and say, can I have a feel, can I have a feel? And you could say, no, I don't want to feel. But why was this the right, why do you feel this was the right fight for AJ to take the Francis Garner fight? I thought you were going to say, can I feel your hair? Um, I think, look, I think it's the biggest, biggest commercial fight out there. You know, we were obviously focused on the Deontay Wilder fight, which was, you know... Uh, between the shadows and his imposing winter coat, he looked every bit the mysterious enforcer. When he reintroduced himself in his deep voice, I'll admit it, I was a bit intimidated. These encounters added to the behind-the-scenes atmosphere as news from the presser began spreading online. 
In the outside world, reporters were confirming fights and sharing details from the event. But even Anthony Joshua himself wasn't aware of all the latest updates. When I interviewed Joshua, he eagerly showed me his phone, where he'd been taking copious notes on Ninganu. His punch stats, training plans, fight strategy, and more. It was cool seeing this insight into how meticulously Joshua approaches his opponents. We actually went over time in our interview, having to rush out so Joshua could take the stage. Although I couldn't see him at first, I could hear Saudi sports executive Turkey Al Sheikh speaking passionately over the sound system. He explained how all the boxers fighting in these high-dollar Saudi matches have his personal phone number for direct communication. It's a totally new promoter-fighter dynamic happening in boxing right now. There were other interesting moments, like Al Sheikh unveiling a flashy new undisputed heavyweight title belt designed for the upcoming Tyson Fury vs. Alexander Usyk bout in Saudi Arabia. And I want, in the end, to show Joshua and Anganu what's waiting for them after the result. Please, can you put it in the screen after the, the result? This is will wait for them after the result of the fight in the 8th of March. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. For Joseph Parker's co-main event fight on March 8th being officially confirmed, the event posters were quickly released, proving once again how rapidly things move in this emerging Middle Eastern boxing scene. Attending this press conference gave me a small glimpse behind the curtain into the glitz, glamour, and organized chaos involved in putting together a massive heavyweight prize fight. In the sleek yet shadowy underground hallways, I encountered scary handshakes, mystery figures, whispered conversations, undisclosed fight details, and more. It was surreal brushing shoulders with legendary promoters and champions in such a tucked away location. The March 8th Knockout Chaos event headlined by Joshua and Nanu is already shaping up to be a can't-miss spectacle. And if this presser was any indication, Fight Night will be filled with plenty of surprises and extravagance that we can only find right now in Saudi Arabia's boxing season. I don't know about you, but my brief access to this strange subterranean world left me pumped for the next phase of unique matchmaking underway in the Middle East. Love or hate the controversy around Saudi boxing, you can't deny it's bringing fresh energy and creativity unlike anything else in combat sports right now. What did you think of my recap? Are you getting hyped for Joshua vs. Nganu and the other upcoming bouts? Let me know your reactions and predictions in the comments. If you enjoyed hearing my personal experience with these larger-than-life fighters and figures, be sure to leave a like and smash that subscribe button for more boxing content. Thanks for watching and catch you all on the next video.